Productions here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about winterizing your running shoes. We're running on packed snow, I guess, and some patches of ice. And I've run around the block a couple times in my years. Uh, trained four winters in upstate New York, Ithaca, New York, at Cornell University, running track and cross country, training the all winter. Um, also three years, three winters in Michigan, uh, good old Midwest. And now living in Colorado for the last three years, I've uh, been running through some pretty rough winter conditions. It's more mild here in Boulder, but uh, I've gone through running on ice, especially if you're a road runner or you have to run on pavement. Some icy trails, but this is more applicable to you pavement warriors, uh, bike path warriors, people where there's layers of ice, sometimes on top of a thin layer of snow, it gets packed down and glazed over. And this is just kind of a real simple way that you could add some traction to your shoes. I've been running in the Speed Goat so far this winter without any big issues, but it's getting really, really icy now on the bike path, uh, and you can't see it always. So this is like an extra precaution. There are products out there like Yak Tracks, not sponsored, uh, that are usually kind of, they have, they're like springs that you strap on to your shoe, and. There's other adaptations of that uh, for running on snow, which are okay, but this is kind of the cheaper alternative. Uh, and there's also Cthulhu spikes, which are almost like crampons. They, there's a wide variety. You can get them at a sporting goods store, but they're, you know, 30, 40 bucks at least, and you have to strap them on your shoes. They're kind of heavy and cumbersome. Great for the mountains, great for the mountain trails. Uh, Cthulhu spikes are like these metal triangles, but this alternative, putting sheet metal screws into the bottom of your shoes, actually works surprisingly well. And liability disclaimer, I am not liable. This is not a foolproof method. If you fall and die, it's not my fault uh, and break your neck. So you do have to be cautious, but this definitely helps add the traction. The actual screws uh, that I use, I'll show you here in a bit. Uh, the head of them actually dig into the snow and ice a pretty decent amount. They don't add a ton of weight to your shoes and it's really inexpensive. So the first step is what you need, the power drill. Uh, you can do it without a drill, but I have a, a hex head, I guess it's called, on the, the drill bit here at the end. And I've done this with a regular like screwdriver before uh, by hand, but it's, sometimes it's hard to start the screw into the shoe, especially if you have a really good tough rubber outsole on your shoe, and it just it takes way longer. So power drill is always better. Uh, go, I went to a local hardware store and I got, you want probably at least 12 uh, screws total at least put six or eight in each shoe. Um, I went ahead and got 24 just so Sandy has a pair as well And we might go through some more as the winter goes on, but I got 24 for a dollar 80 uh, So pretty cheap uh, 3 8 inch hex head sheet metal screws uh, I'll show them in detail there and they fit into uh, this drill bit you could drill pilot holes into the bottom of your shoe But today I'm gonna put them in my Hoko 1-1 Wakas, uh, a good hybrid road trail shoe. Um, I was thinking about putting them in the Speed Goats. Man, Speed Goat Vibra Meltzel already has good traction. Uh, so I like to put them in the Wakas, they're a little lighter. Uh, you definitely want to put them in the thicker parts of the shoe though. I'll zoom in for the detail. But you obviously don't want to put them in the really thin holes on the bottom or a really thin part of your shoe because these are 3 8 inch uh, screws and we're going to put them in with the sharp end going in towards your foot. And so you want to make sure, even if you have hokas, <laughs> that they don't poke through. I've learned the hard way, I've landed on a rock and had it go up and through. You'll feel it a little bit, it's not going to like puncture into the bottom of your foot unless you really screw this up and, or you have really thin minimalist shoes, I wouldn't recommend that. Then you might want to go with a, a shorter screw, so that's really important. Uh, not, not liable if you <laughs> puncture your foot, but uh, this is how I do it. It's a good alternative method, great traction on thin snow and a little bit of ice. So here we go. All right, so I got the screw already in the drill bit there. Um, I'm gonna put it on a thick part of the shoe. Usually I work on the on the outside, so outside edge where you're gonna have front impact, and then also kind of near the front where also you're gonna be pushing off with your foot as you run along. So uh, you don't need a lot, a whole lot like in the middle or in the back, but we'll go on the front outside edge. Again, on the thick part 
of the shoe. Uh, you wanna make sure you don't poke yourself, so. Just kinda start it right in there. And uh, I just pretty make, much sure make it so it's kind of, uh, it's not flush with the bottom of the shoe. It sticks out a little bit still, but it's definitely in there and you could put your hand inside the shoe and make sure it's not poking through. Uh, Cause you did that on too thin, on the thin part it, it would poke through, even with these hokas. Uh, keep in mind the hawk is one of the thinner hokas. So you gotta make sure that's okay. But yeah, we're gonna start with an outline that's gonna go, maybe go bam, 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 a uh, couple on the side maybe around here, and then maybe a couple in the heel on the back in case you're doing a downhill slide or something and you wanna have a little something to catch. But essentially this hex head uh, is what kind of digs in to the, to the ice and snow, uh, especially if it's sticking out just a little bit. It just gives you that much of an edge uh, on the ice or hard packed snow. So I'll continue going around uh, the shoe and then show the finished product. All right, so there you have it, uh, the finished product. I went ahead and put in nine on the bottom of my shoe, uh, kind of around the edge again. You could probably put in more, but uh, put some in the heel too, because I sometimes come off of there. Uh, and then for push off on the medial side, but then also when you land kind of on the outside. Um, so that'll, that'll add some ample traction. And uh, again, it doesn't add too much weight to the shoe. You could always take them out, adjust them, make sure when you stick your hand in that you're not feeling any of the tips poking through because uh, you'll notice that. But again, real cost-effective way to add some traction to your shoes. Again, this is for really icy conditions, uh, no matter what kind of outsole you have. If it's really icy, on, especially on pavement, uh, you want to make sure you're not slipping and falling. I've taken falls before in college and gotten concussions, so uh, you gotta be careful. All right, so there you have it. Uh, how to put sheet metal screws and winterize your road running shoes or even trail running shoes. Uh, thanks again, guys, for all the support. I really appreciate it. That music video was brought to you by my Patreon supporters. Uh, we reached our first milestone on Patreon, so I promised you guys a new music video intro, and that was it. And I really, really appreciate all the exclusive... Uh, well, exclusive support. The people on the Patreon page get exclusive content as well, uh, including special training talks and uh, unpublished Instagram photos, uh, as well as other tips and posts and uh, their personal training talk question, individual question, uh, if you're at the highest tier there. So really do appreciate it. You guys could do your December questions uh, if you haven't for this month. Uh, really appreciate all the feedback on here, all the comments, all the votes and thumbs up. Couldn't do this without you guys. Uh, it's really been a dream come true and I love making videos. So it's been a lot of fun. It's been a great journey. Uh, I'm gonna keep the momentum rolling into 2016 and also add some more videos uh, before the end of the year's up. But wish you guys a safe and happy holiday season. Uh, if you're, if it's winter where you are, it might be summer, I don't know. Um, but again, best of luck with your training and racing. Uh, I've been blown away with the support. Uh, you know, we sell training plans on, on sagerunning.com. Um, and you know, it's a great gift for the holidays. I'm just throwing that out there, uh, business plug, but uh, really do appreciate all your feedback, positive feedback. I know a lot of people gotten marathon PRs and race PRs uh, following the plan. So it's really satisfying to hear as a coach, uh, even a coach that screws, screws up my own training. So we'll keep the OTQ series going as well. Uh, thank you so much again, and stay tuned for more Via2Max Productions. Yeah.